slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. Just a few hours till the Poker Vlogger Showdown. But in the meantime, I've got King Queen of Clubs and don't notice the straddle. So I raise to only 15 and get called by the cutoff and the most priced in straddler in the storied history of priced in straddlers. And the flop makes me think of a golf podcast that I actually know nothing about because I don't play golf. I bet 15 and cutoff raises to 50. Well that's nice. When I get raised here, the feeling can only be compared to that feeling you feel after a double bogey with a nine iron and you're in a sand trap on a par four with a wedge. Eh, forget it, I can't pull it off. Anyway, back to a game I understand. Cutoff's not raising here with anything less than a worse flush, a set, or two pair. And most players will never fold a hand that strong. So ideally, it's all about to go down, which means the price of a turn card is going up. You flopping on me? Oh, no. Good advice. I had planned on telling him, but now I won't. After Cutoff gives it a good think, much to my dismay, he takes the safe route. I must admit, I'm pretty shocked. This fold seems borderline heroic, given how many people have shoved on me on this trip with just some pair. Don't do it, just some pair. Hey, Mrs. Pear. And while I didn't get max value, I'll take the win. But man, looking back on that flop, I gotta say, I get little tingles when someone bumps it up from behind while I've got the nuts in my hand. Look, like we've talked about this. I'm not making these up. There's no way you say I have the nuts in my hand. No, he almost stuffed it in. I've got kings, raise over a limp to 20, and get four callers. After three checks, I try to bet 40, but fail. A few hands ago, there was a big dust up when this player string bet, and this player was livid. There was yelling, the floor was called over, and the table is still a bit toasty. So when I bet like this, everyone's got something to say. Is that a double, or is it the line matter? The line does yeah. The line does yes. matter, okay. The line doesn't yeah. matter here. The line yeah. doesn't matter? Okay, I, I, I thought it was the line, I, I apologize. No, there is no line, yeah, so it's just a $20 bet. How Make much sure do you want to bet? I wish I could, Big Blind, but probably not. Obviously, it's laughable to bet 20 into a $100 pot, but technically, I bet 20. The Lojack, who was already calling my 40, happily calls my 20. And the Big Blind, who was both the earlier string better and the ringleader opposing my string bet, he had the autofold checkbox pre-checked for 40, but unchecks it for 20. He demanded a discount, and he got it. This turn brings in the flush, and everyone checks. After this river, I bet 50, this time with great care, and Big Blind snap calls. Pop quiz, Hot Shots. What just happened? I'm kinda new to poker, and I'm still learning the proper etiquette sizing procedure, and my string bet was just an innocent mistake. I know exactly what I'm doing. Recognized that Big Blind would have folded for 40 on the flop, so I pretended to string bet just to eke out a few more drops of value. And while I played the role of some ignorant beginner, I just dragged in a cool 170, solely because I'm a devious angle-shooting motherfucker. So what's your answer? A or B? I'll give you a hint. This evil villain mustache cost me exactly 170. I've got Ace King, and after a straddle and two limps, I raise to 45 and get called by one limper. On this flop, I bet 50 and cut off calls. This turn isn't great given all the draws and two pair combos that just improved, so I check and he checks back. Okay, dealer, for the 500th time, please don't make me regret raising pre-flop with Ace King. Oh, hey, I appreciate that, because it feels so good to be nutted. So now, I have a cunning plan. Given my earlier string bet mistake, I pretend to try and bet a little under pot, but uh-oh, I make another boo-boo and wildly overbet. But I get the sense people may be wising up to me. It's so obvious you have things. It's so obvious. Am I that obvious? All right, I'll tone it down. Can I get a selfie with you? Honestly, it's not really my thing, but I can make an exception. Like when these two emerging vloggers ask me for one, you know, I get it. My cloud helps boost their credibility, so I'll do it for a nominal fee. Aww. Stop. Vlogger time. The meetup game is officially underway, and at my first table, I see a familiar foe in one Andrew Nimi, one of the slow poker stands who begged for a selfie. Okay, let's see what this guy's got. Personally, I've got tens, and after a straddle and two limps, I raise to 60, and get called by the noob in the big blind and the low jack limper. And the flop is... Huh. What's the best way to describe it? Ideal? Advantageous? Satisfactory? Agreeable? Optimal? Relatively appealing? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Rather favorable flop. Flop is favorable. Flop is pretty favorable. Flop is favorable. Flop is pretty favorable. Flop is rather favorable. A pretty favorable flop. Favorable flop once again. No, I still can't think of it. All right, let's just go with relatively appealing. Two checks to me, and since both my opponents would certainly three bet preflop with jacks plus, I've got a hammer lock on this hand, regardless of an overcard on later streets. So I down bet 70, which should look like an ace king style stab, and both players call. After a blank turn and two checks, I size up to 190, which could look like I'm trying to buy the pot, and while it does push out the slow poker fanboy, low jack sticks around. After this river, as I'm debating how much to bet after low jack checks, he surprises me with a gift bag filled with over $500 bills. Aw, low jack. Not unlike the flop, this too is relatively appealing. After a tough tank by me, I do what a man's got to do. I'm all in.
A little bit more. I think it's like two more. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six hundred. Six hundred something total. Apparently, Lojack was bluffing with a busted straight flush draw, which makes it kind of funny that he asked for a count, put on a song and dance, and Muck contemplated a call. As I'm stacking the biggest pot of my life, Hijack reminds me of my meetup game contest. I almost forgot. Anybody want to take a stab? Okay. Yes, you, Andrew Nimi. Well, since you did fold the case 10, and given I did size up on the turn, for a novice player, that's a solid guess. And while you are wrong, I will declare you the winner anyway. Congratulations. So, Andrew, I know you're watching, because you always do, and always comment with a ton of heart emojis, and it's kind of overkill, but check your mailbox for your very own relatively appealing jam jams. Wear them in good health, and best of luck with that poker channel of yours. I'm rooting for you, buddy. I've got queens, and raised a 60, over a strata limper named Eric. I like Eric. I don't like his luck. He's been limp calling with any two cards, and just can't lose. And right on schedule, he limp calls again. After this flop, I bet 60, and Eric min raises to 120. I've been working on my hand reading, and it's difficult here given Eric's uncapped range. But I settle on these possibilities. Most likely, he doesn't have anything yet, but instead of just calling to realize his equity, he'd rather juice up the pot now, because he's running like a god and knows his card's coming. So he's got a flush draw and or a straight draw, like queen 10 or 10-8. He's got ace jack, and is tossing out a feeler bet in case I've got a hand like ace king. He could have a set or two pair, but I do feel like he'd raise bigger for value and protection. So with all these doors front of mind, I call. On this turn, I check, and Eric bets 280. The offsuit 8 completes the most obvious draw, but I double block that. I do still have the gut shot, and some chance I'm still ahead, and while I don't feel great about it, I call. On this river, I check, and Eric bets 550. And now I'm not a fan of what's behind all the doors. And after Eric opens his door, he admits that had I re-raised flop, he would have shoved, and I would have lost huge, despite being the favorite. Look, I could focus on the negative. I did just lose a big pot, but the Brainiacs at Red Chip Poker maintain that I correctly played all streets, and I legitimately feel energized by the progress that I've made in hand reading. Of course, hand reading skills don't pay for tickets to the Peppa Pig stage show. We get to see Peppa Pig? Well, once Eric played Queen 10 off, not anymore. Really? I know, not even suited. And that'll do it for episode 12 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. And hey, join me on social media. The water's warm. Oh, and one more. I kind of overstocked. Can each of you buy just a couple thousand fanny packs? Thanks. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. Enough monkey business. Do it already.